So here we have a Cisco Catalyst 2960 PoE Enterprise Network Switch. I got this from one of my friends in my tech class, and I got this for 20 bucks. And 20 bucks was honestly quite a steal for something like this, considering that, that even in their used condition, they're quite a bit more expensive, expensive than that. So this is a business enterprise switch, and it has 24 fast Ethernet ports and 2 gigabit Ethernet ports right there. And on the back of it, there's the console port for setting it up for the initial setup, actually. So let's get into the initial configuration of this switch. So for this scenario, I'm going to be using a rollover cable. So one end is USB, the other end is RJ45. So the USB is going to go into my PC, and the RJ45 goes into the console port on the back of this switch. And it'll make the computer think that the USB part of it is the serial. Alright, so as you can see, the USB is going into my PC. So let's take the other end of it, the RJ45 end of it, and plug it in to this console port. So now that all that stuff is connected, now let's open up a terminal emulator. In my case, I'm going to be using uh, PuTTY. Choose serial for connection type. And no, that's not right. We need to use uh, COM4, at least on my PC. Alright, so we have a window open. Press enter. And there we go. We have the switch prompt. And this is running off of Cisco iOS. So we are in user exec mode. So to be able to access a little more advanced features, we need to get into uh, privileged exec. And that is achieved by typing the enable command or just en to abbreviate it and there we go so we're in privileged exec and you can tell because there's a hashtag there instead of just that um less than sign or symbol right there anyway and now to actually configure this thing we need to get into global config mode and that is achieved by typing configure terminal or just abbreviate it conf t there we go, so we're in global config mode. So now let's do some basic configuration on this switch. So let's start off by setting a password to be able to get into um, privileged exec mode. And we do this by typing the enable secret, sorry, enable secret, pa um, yeah, enable secret command. And after enable secret, you put whatever password you want. So I'm just going to use an example um, password. Yeah, that's not very secure. But it's just for an example. Press enter. So it accepted that. We'll get back to that later. And now let's do, let's do a banner MOTD. Basically what the banner MOTD is, is um, when you first open up the connection to the switch, you get a message, and these messages would typically say, uh, I don't know, unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. And that is set by using the banner MOTD command, So, and you can put whatever uh, banner you want. So, the command is banner MOTD, and then hashtag. Alright, so let's, let's enter an example banner. So let's say unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. Exclamation point. You know, make it sound intimidating. And then hashtag to end it. And there we go, it accepted that. And now to demonstrate that, let's back out of this exit and also back out of a uh, privileged exec now I press return to get started and see right there there is the banner that we just set and we're on the user exec mode now and that and now when we type enable since we set a password earlier now it's gonna ask you for a password to be able to get into privileged exec to privileged exec mode so the password was password. 
And there we go, we're into privileged exec mode. So another thing that we can do regarding the password is encrypt the password so that it's not just in plain text. If you do the um, show run command to show the running configuration. So in order to do that, we need to go back into global config mode, so con config t. So it's, uh, and the command to do this is service password encryption. And as you can see here, up here, I got the command wrong because it was giving me the invalid input detected uh, system message. So if you ever get stuck on a command, or if you only know like one part of the command, you can type that part of the command and then put a question mark, and it'll give you a list of options that you can use to complete it. So I originally got it wrong, so it is that one. So I want to do service password. Um, hyphen encryption and there we go so it accepted that one so while we're in global config mode let's do the let's show the running configuration or if you're in global config mode it's do show running configuration so do show run to abbreviate it so this is the running configuration and here it is showing the different interfaces starting from the VLANs and now we're in the fast ethernet interfaces oh yeah and see right up here this is the secret password that we put in here and now instead of plain text it is encrypted with all these you know different symbols letter letters and symbols so it's not just plain text, so not just anyone can look at it. So that's also a pretty handy feature on Cisco iOS. Okay, so now I have plugged in an Ethernet cable coming from the router and plugged it into the switch. And I plugged it into Fast Ethernet 23. Sorry, Fast Ethernet 23. And as you can see from these uh, system messages, or these log messages, now uh, it is up, it is working. It's something, something is connected to it. So now, what my intent is, um, is to set up the switch with an IP address for remote management instead of having to use a serial cable every single time you want to manage this thing. So the default management um, interface is VLAN 1, so interface or INT, VLAN 1. So for this scenario, I'm going to be using the IP address of 192.168.1.137. So the command is IP space address 192.168.1.137. And the um, <coughs> subnet mask 255.255.255.0. So there we go. We just assigned an IP address to VLAN 1. Now let's do IP, well, let's actually see what the available options are. So we're back in global config mode, so let's type IP, see what the options are. So what I, what I want to do is set a default gateway, and there it is right there, default hyphen gateway, so IP default hyphen gateway and that's of course my router's address 192.168.1.1 and there we go so we just set the IP default gateway and also let's just set a host name just for the heck of it and yeah so let's back out of global config so let's do Actually, no. Actually, that was my mistake. We need to stay in global config mode. And it, the command is host name. And phew, I, don't, I don't know what a good host name is. Let's just do uh, in number 8, G, R, in number 8. So there you go. 
now the prompt uh, shows Nate Great as the host name. So now to continue on for setting it up for remote access, now we have to make an IP domain name. So go back into configuration. So IP domain name and just some random website as an example. All right, so we set the domain name. So now we have to generate RSA keys. So it is crypto and crypto key. Generate RSA and say a thousand twenty four for how many bits? All right, so now that's done. So let's actually take a look at the interfaces again. So do show run. So this is what we want down here, line VTY04. So line VTY04 to get into that interface. All right, so now we're in. We need to type transport input SSH since yes I'm gonna be using SSH for this. Login local password password and exit. Get out of this. Now we need to go to line console zero or line con zero. Type <coughs> excuse me, type logging synchronous. And again, type login local. All right, so we're done with that. So let's get out of here. So now we need to make a username and password. So in my case, username, admin, password, uh, password still. Alright, so we should be done with that. So now to verify that SSH is enabled, it is SHIP SSH. So SSH is enabled. Alright, so it is enabled. So let's back out of this exit. Close this window. Open PuTTY back up. Select SSH for this um, connection type. And let's try the IP address. Alright, so it's giving us a security alert, so let's just continue anyway. Yes. Alright, good. So, we it seems to have worked. So, login as it's a username that was admin. And the password is password. Alright, so we have officially just SSH'd the switch. Or in other words, we accessed it remotely. All right, so we have finished all the in initial configuration that I would like to do on this switch. And this is the router cable, by the way, giving it uh, some data. And also, this switch suppo supposedly has PoE on it, or power over ethernet. So to test that out, I have an IP phone right here. So let's take its cable, the ethernet cable, and plug it into one of the ports. And boom, there you go. It is powering on. It is indeed receiving power. So that's nice to know. The PoE does work. The IP phone seems to be receiving data from the switch as well, as it properly registered to my server. So it's working as it should. 
So now let's plug in everything else into the switch. Alright, so now everything else is hooked up. Everything seems to be working properly. And there you have all the status messages, or the log messages from plugging everything in. So this has been a video over the Cisco Catalyst 2960 PoE switch. And thank you all for watching, and y'all have a nice day.